Hello, it's uh, Adil bringing you a review of the FTSE 100 from an intermarket analysis perspective. Okay, so uh, basically what happened today, um, I got murdered on the FTSE 100. Uh, me totally misread it today, totally, totally misread the uh, FTSE 100. Uh, although I did make the points back in the week, uh, towards the evening, uh, still on 311, well, plus 311 pl points for the week. Um, so, still okay for the week in terms of point counts, but with regards to reading the FTSE, hmm, it's been relatively um, hmm, quite hard actually. Uh, well, today was certainly hard. Um, reason being is because uh, FTSE 100 generally has a positive correlation with uh, Aussie USD and uh, New Zealand USD. Uh, okay, we know with regards to the New Zealand dollar that there's uh, intervention going on uh, with regards to central bank intervening, etc., trying to sell and keep the yen, keep the the Kiwi down. So. Any weakness there obviously can't be interpreted as risk off, but we know with regards to the Aussie that can be, um, and even with regards to the Kiwi, even though we have central bank intervening, the Kiwi still certainly managed to uh, traverse and obviously push higher. So that again was uh, was even more bullish when you have a central bank intervening, and yet people are willing to buy uh, New Zealand dollars, uh, or Aussie dollars uh, instead of the US dollar. That again is um, is a sign of uh, risk on. Um, so and even obviously with Draghi as well uh, in the background, certainly sign of risk on as well. So interesting, interesting times. Okay, so all I can say for now is um, uh, it's a real conundrum. Okay, uh, we did have oil spiking higher today as well from 88 to 91, and yet the FTSE moved in the opposite direction. We had Kiwi Aussie spiking higher, yet the FTSE in, uh, moved in the opposite direction. Um, so uh very confusing from an intermarket analysis an intermarket analysis perspective um because that's why i trade based on uh, and uh, so certainly confusing with regards to risk effects and commodities certainly uh, a divergence there certainly a divergence there even with regards to uh, obviously copper stabilizing gold stabilizing and obviously oil pushing higher as well so a real conundrum uh, either the um the equities are lagging or the uh, the the fx markets are lagging so um and I always believe that FX and commodities generally because they're more liquid they tend to give you the real picture so so the FTSE itself has fallen from grace and uh, has fallen quite substantially so so I'll see I'll certainly do some analysis uh, and uh, give you my view uh, with uh, try and do some uh, US market analysis incorporated within this uh, this may well be a long video um, but again it's all for educational purposes those who wish to gain an insight into my thought process and my day trading style okay Let's go. Okay, let's have a look at it from term in terms of fundamentals. Okay, so fundamentals today, you in the morning you had you uh, just specifically for the UK. Okay, we know uh, Hong Kong got smoked overnight along with the Nikkei, absolutely butchered. Okay, uh, reason being is because uh, Mr. A chap up is it Mr. Thiel, um, at BlackRock basically stated <coughs> uh, along with Mr. Draghi that uh, the emphasis was more towards fiscal uh, policy. And uh, Mr. Chap at BlackRock stated that individuals were buying bonds in the Eurozone, such as Spain, Italy, etc., in anticipation of this uh, bond buying or, easy, or QE. Uh, so, um, but effectively, they were front running something that wasn't uh, uh, w w wasn't going to occur. So, um, so again, that obviously caused a risk off style, a risk off uh, poison the markets and obviously US markets US data are obviously stronger and obviously that uh, created tapering fears in the market sold off adding Ebola or adding the Hong Kong protests and the situation isn't looking good adding the rumor with regards to capital controls in Russia all those situations even though they were denied it towards the end again if you add all that into into the mix it certainly doesn't bode well okay so all those factors at play number one okay um, with regards to the um, uh, the markets themselves okay so with regards to today we had um, some positive data out the U UK, okay, stronger uh, data with regards to the UK, and uh, yet that um, still failed to keep the FTSE afloat. So uh, interesting times, interesting times, okay. So overall, we had some stronger o o Aussie and Kiwi data overnight. So Aussie data data was stronger overnight, relatively speaking. So that should have certainly propelled the market. And obviously, the PMI UK PMI data was stronger than expected today as well. Uh, negated yesterday's weaker data. So again. Um, what can we say? I mean, unemployment uh, numbers in Spain were better than expected as well. Um, the inflation data out of the eurozone was weaker than expected. Therefore, obviously, uh, uh, obviously, uh, putting forth the argument for more QE, 
So it looks like the whole QE trade was unwound in one day, and hence the reason why you had a massive sell off in the markets. So, <coughs> so today's sell off was very emotive in nature, as you can see with regards to the candlestick there. Um, so a lot, I do expect that to uh, retract and, and retrace uh, quite substantially, hopefully to going into tomorrow. Uh, with regards to US data as well, US uh, jobless claims were better than expected. Uh, although the ISM, even the ISM, sorry, was better than expected as well. So you did have a lot of economic data that came out quite strong. Although the factory orders that came in at minus ten percent obviously negated the previous two uh, data that was better. So overall, it was all about Mr. Draghi. Obviously, Mr. Draghi failed to deliver the QE uh, gun or QE bazooka that everybody was expecting, and obviously that caused a, a panic and, and a sell-off in the market. So okay, so. How do you interpret this market thus far? Okay, so uh, given the fact that the, in the morning you had dovish commentary out the uh, from BO, certain BOE members in the morning with regards to interest rates remaining low, etc., etc., although towards the end you did have somebody come out quite hawkish. Uh, but nevertheless, um, the economic data itself today was relatively strong. Uh, sterling obviously fell, so it went down to 1.6150. So whenever the currency falls, the FTSE generally tends to move higher, especially the 250 and the AIM. Puts the aim all share, uh, and obviously that wasn't the case either today. So, uh, this whole sell off is based on ECB, Mr. Draghi, obviously not providing the uh, the QE uh, bullet that everybody was looking for. Okay, uh, but having nevertheless, he did say that um, the option was there uh, up to one trillion in uh, in ABS and QE, etc. Going forward, inflation date was lower than expected, although he did downplay that to a certain extent, but certainly the, the carrot is still dangling. So I can understand how everybody was uh, obviously upset and the whole QE trade was being unwound. Uh, but from my perspective, if the carrot is still dangling, then the market should certainly be uh, be attacking that and obviously certainly be uh, trading in accordance with that, especially when oil and gold and copper are obviously uh, stabilizing or moving higher. And obviously risk effect is obviously moving higher as well. So hence the reason why that's distorted to a large extent. And there wasn't any major geopolitical events that could have caused a sell-off in the, in, the, in, the, in the markets, okay? Uh, other than obviously the the unwound uh, unwind with regards to Mr. Draghi, so there must have been a lot of hot money in the market. Obviously, that's out now, so uh, the market can now think again uh, or basically re reset back to zero, and obviously uh, the whole th thought process starts again. Okie dokie, right? So again, um, I'm not fussed. I'm still I'm on 336 points of the week. From my perspective, that's that's pretty good. Uh, I think that's pretty good. Um, so uh, no complaints from my side. Um, you win some, you lose some. It's all part of trading. Uh, you will be successful on some trades. You'll be unsuccessful on others. Keep your risk management, keep your money management. Obviously, adhere to your stop loss uh, religiously and uh, keep trading, folks. Okay. Doesn't matter if it's a good week or a bad week. Uh, in the end, if you have a good strategy, you'll always succeed. Okay. Now that I've obviously oh, gone over the fundamentals now, uh, a lot of it you can argue is noise and other, other you can argue is quite important. I think the overriding theme is that the sterling is lower, so that's something that obviously overrides. A stronger UK data, again that overrides. Dovish rhetoric out the uh, BOE, again that overrides. And uh, US markets are now into support. Okay, So let's just give you an insight into US markets first of all because that's what we need to know before we trade uh, the UK market. So Dow transportation average, inverted head and shoulders formation, the 10 minute chart. Daily chart, obviously we held support, so that means that FTSE will hold support. Okay, Let's go to the Dow, the Dow is very important for the FTSE itself, inverted head and shoulders formation, the 10 minute chart as you can see there. Daily chart, again bottoming tail, Okay, uh, we've held this key trend line. So again, this is potentially bullish for the markets to move higher. Okay, let's go to the S&P 500, and uh, so again, uh, inverted head and shoulders formation. Okay, so bear that in mind. 10-minute chart, bottoming tail. Okay, held this key trend line, as you can see here. Key trend line held, bottoming tail, and uh, now we uh, can, can negate this now. Okay, and we're on, we've obviously held that. And now we're looking to potentially move higher. So that what does that mean for the FTSE? We move higher. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at the German, sorry, the Nasdaq now. Nasdaq now. So we go to a daily chart. Again, bottoming tail held the bottoming cha bottom channel. Again, uh, put in a reversal, key reversal candle, looking to move higher. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at the semis because the semis are very important. Or should I say Russell? Sorry, the Russell, Russell, Russell index. Okay. Again, inverted head and shoulders as you can see in the ten-minute chart. Daily chart. We've held a held that pivot low. Okay. So we've held that pivot low horizontal support, looking for a potential move higher. So overall, U.S. markets are into support. So where does that leave us with regards to the FTSE 100? Okay, 
So let's have a look at the FTSE 100 from a weekly chart. A weekly chart certainly doesn't look well, uh, although you are into horizontal support in this region here now, the 6430 level. So watch out, 6430, a 6420, key, key, key support. Okay. Daily chart, again, you as you can see, horizontal support around the 6430 uh, to 6420 level. Okay. So 6440 to 6420, ideally anywhere around that zone, certainly will be a very, very important support for the FTSE 100. Going to the FTSE 250, okay, FTSE 250, uh, we have obviously gone into this diagonal trend line support, we have pierced it, uh, and we've also broken the previous low, so that's something of, of a concern to me, uh, but again, we keep a lookout, uh, and the lookout here, this horizontal support here, uh, obviously if that support fails to hold, then obviously it looks as if the market will continue to move lower, but for now we'll keep an eye on that, if we can regain this trend line, like we've done here once or twice, then yep, we can certainly look to uh, trade back above that channel. So that's something that we keep an eye out for. Uh, weekly chart, okay, with regards to the, uh, the FTSE 250, it certainly doesn't bode well. Uh, if I just connect all these together, as you can see, we're banging into that uh, support level now. So that's something that certainly we'll uh, keep an eye out for trading-wise. Okay, so that's something that we'll keep an eye out for. Let me just get rid of this... Uh, work that I've been doing, uh, not sure what's been happening, obviously we've broken out a channel, broken out a channel, and the market may, may continues to make lower lows and lower highs, but we are in the lower channel support, so that's something that, again, some food for thought, and uh, see exactly with what happens with regards to the markets there, let's just have a look here, previous photos on, oh, so that support's broken, so again, it's only a diagonal trend line, that doesn't hold, and obviously the market will continue to move low, so the weekly chart certainly doesn't bode well, a uh, daily chart again certainly we are into that potential potential pivot support zone okay that's something that we keep an eye out for FTSE aim all share again doesn't look very nice weekly chart previous resistance equals support daily chart obviously you can see here we broke this new low so this certainly has an argument here of continuing there's no real reason to stop this so the FTSE aim should doesn't certainly doesn't bode well at all okay let's have a look at the smaller time frame see if we can spot anything on the FTSE from a smaller time frame I mean, the 10-minute chart is a real mess right now. Uh, let me just get rid of these two lines. Okay, so 10-minute chart, real mess is into pivot S3 support. That's the only argument you can have there. 60-minute chart, again, no argument here at all. We're in no man's land. Only thing that we can focus on there is the, the pivot S3 support. So we'll see exactly how that plays out. So certainly uh, from a, from a um, technical argument, it certainly still remains weak. There's, there's no technical argument really to be buying the FTSE. From a um, intermarket analysis argument, there's a very, there's a, certainly a strong argument given the fact that commodities and risk FX are certainly afloat a and remain strong. Um, obviously, equities have to go in, uh, have to pull back in the line, in alignment with the movement higher. If that's not the case, then obviously commodities and and risk FX will then obviously be forced lower by equities and, and will come into alignment there. So one of them is Pinocchio, and it's our key to work that out. My current position right now, I'll declare. Given the fact that I am a trader, my current position is I am short FTSE from the uh, 70. I've got 77 average on the FTSE. And I am short overnight, so uh, and I'm currently sitting at 336 points of the week. So overall, fantastic for me from a, for a trading week. But again, as a trader, I'll be first to confess I absolutely got it wrong today on the FTSE. Okay, uh, but there's no shame in that. You know, at the end of the day, we have to accept when we're wrong. When we've misread the market, because I did expect Draghi to keep the market afloat, especially when the inflation numbers had come out worse than expected in the morning, and in the uh, obviously um, the, given the fact that the market had weathered the storm overnight with regards to Hong Kong and Nikkei being down quite substantially and didn't, didn't, did not uh, well basically fail to make new lows. So, so all those factors put together, okay, all those factors put together. So, um, but again. It's a, it's a long-winded procedure, especially when it comes to intermarket analysis. I can't go through every single variable that I have to observe as a day trader. But uh, overall, uh, that's basically what I was expecting. So, uh, especially with regards to the yen, it was holding up well until obviously the U.S. markets came on top and uh, started selling off quite substantially. So, uh, it was all about those um, orders that came in the um, initially the first two batches of data about the U.K. U.S. were pretty strong. The challenger, challenger job cuts were strong, and uh, initial jobless claims were strong. It's only, and even the ISM data was strong. It's only when the factory orders came in and that really spooked the markets. Okay. Anyway, that's basically where we are. Uh, okay, so um, that's basically the FTSE 100 in a nutshell, folks. Technically, it remains very weak. Fundamentally, an argument there for the market to reverse. Uh, but for now, given the fact that we are into the 75, 76 region, I am expecting that to obviously move lower. And the only support that I can see at this very moment in time 
is that support which I've explained lower down in the 40s, 30s, or should I say 6, 4, 30s, 20s uh, uh, level. Okay, other than that, I can't see any support at all. Okay, folks, so uh, that's, uh, that's a wrap. Risk on, risk off. Wax on, wax off. Goodbye now.